Hi, I am Nehal Nayak, clinical embryologist from Surat. I am working as an embryologist since 2010. I have done my masters in clinical embryology from Monash University, Australia. So, I am working as a freelance embryologist in various hospitals in Gujarat and Maharashtra. So, today I will be discussing about how to set up an IUI lab or an andrology lab. I will be touching briefly on all topics. So, today we will be discussing about how to set up an IUI lab. So, we will start with the layout. What are the essential things according to the law? So, firstly, IUI lab is called an level 1 ART lab. So, general requirements for that lab are reception, waiting, consulting room, storage space, record space, examination room, backup, power supply and fire safety arrangements. This all the general requirements are available in any normal clinic or in hospital. In addition to that, if you want to start an IUI lab, now according to the new laws, you have to register for it and the mandatory things in that uh, hospital or a lab are like they should have an semen collection room, insemination room and andrology laboratory. Above all, they should also have a service for a pathology lab or a collection lab, blood collection lab in the hospital. So, semen collection room and insemination room and other autoclave area will be coming in a clean area and andrology labs should be a sterile area. So, what are the things mandatory for the semen collection room? So, firstly, semen collection room is very much important. Some people give their uh, normal rooms for where the patients are, wh which room the patients are given, but that is not the thing with the new law you must have a semen collection room away from the waiting area. It should be a silent and cool and pleasant place connected to the IUI lab. So, IUI lab and the collection room is connected through a window which is openable only by the collection room person. So, that the after the collection the person do not have to go to the lab, they can just transfer the sample from the collection window. So, it should have the collection window and then it should be attached with the bathrooms. Uh, relaxing chair or couch should be there uh, and other mood lifting magazines or DVDs or other uh, posters should be there. So, if the person is unable to uh, produce the sample, he can take the help of that things. So, this is all about the semen collection room. Now, we will go on to the andrology lab. So, if your IUI IVF lab is on the top floor, then IUI lab should be on the top floor, not attached with each other, but on the same floor at least. And the platform and the other walls and ceilings and uh, all the things should be of uh, tiles, granite or the epoxy paint. So, that they, they do not generate any kind of VOCs. Okay, and all the wall, ceiling and uh, tiles corners should be rounded. So, they do not gather any kind of dust or uh, any kind of uh, particle matter in the lab. Then it should be sterile and VOC free as I told you. Only split ACs are allowed in the lab, not window AC because it has all kind of other uh, impurities also comes with the window AC and all the wiring should be concealed. UV light should be there because as you know semen is a very infectious sample. So, before processing it and after the completion of the IUI preparation, you should start the UV light for at least 5-10 minutes. And now about the area of the lab, it should be 10 by 10 that is somewhere around 100 square feet that is enough, but it can be more, but then you will should be able to sterilize that area properly. So, minimum requirement is 100 square feet and uh, as I told you it should be separate from IVF lab, no inlet outlet should be attached to the IVF lab. 
uh, sterile gloves clothes everything should be used silk is preferred over the cotton and uh, you should have an andrologist who have the degree in nephro or uh, urology which is mandatory according to the new laws and a an andrology technician and other staff which can help to clean that area and uh, maintain the lab environment so this is all about the mandatory requirements of the andrology lab now we will switch on to the insemination room it could be uh, semi clean kind of room but it should have uh, ot table ot lights sterile or semi sterile uh, near to iy lab spacious trained nurse should be there uh, and the instrument used to for uh, intra uterine insemination are sterile speculum dilators balsalum etc and the patient should be able to rest there for 15 to 30 minutes after the insemination so that we can check for any other complications like uh, cramps bleeding uh, or any other dis discomfort uh, due to the insemination now the iui lab equipments these are the mandatory equipments which the uh, law or the ART bill has uh, mentioned in their bill. S firstly, it is the laminar airflow. Two by two or uh, is more than enough. But if you want to go for three by two, that's up to you. And then uh, you should have a centrifuge, new newer or a Meckler chamber for sperm counting, test tube warmer. Cryocans is not mandatory, it's optional. If you want to store the semen, then you should have cryocan, otherwise it's optional. Then a binocular or a trinocular microscope. Binocular is okay, but if you want to record or to show your patients what the IUI samples uh, look like or what the sperms look like, what was the pre-wash, post-wash, or even you want to see in your cabin what the andrology technician is preparing, how it is prepared, the sample is prepared, how was it like pre-wash, does it has had uh, so much pus cells or debris or something and the post-wash is good or not, then you should have a trinocular microscope which is attached with the camera, LED and a laptop. So then the uh, other general requirements like AC, refrigerator, and uh, media and disposable are of course the main ingredients for IUI. So this is the centrifuge, we how like you can take the manual one also and the other one is the sperm fuge which can maintain the temperature inside so that the rotational heat doesn't affect the sperm. And this is the microscope and the warmer. This is the macular chamber and the cryocans. The smallest one is enough for the IUI lab. And this is how the whole setup of the andrology lab looks like. Like the 2x2 two two laminar, the trinocular microscope, the screen and the warmer. Now about the disposables. Which disposable you should use just because they are low or cheap cost or uh, easily available you should not use the disposable you use should be of CE marked it should be uh, mouse embryo tested ME tested and all the uh, disposables should be outguessed before using so because when they were they are packed they are packed in a gas uh, packet so it should be outguessed before using. So mainly uh, disposables required for IUI are the semen container, the test tubes, the dropper and IUI catheters and semen freezing vials if you are going to freeze that semen. And mainly most important thing is triple ID should be followed the patient's name, patient birth date or the mobile number or the photo ID should be attached with each sample and you should process one sample at a time 
not multiple samples at a time so that you uh, end up with the mixing up of the samples so it is like uh, mandatory nowadays so you process one sample at a time and couple must be screened for any other probable infections like HIV, HBS, HG, VDRL etc before going for IUI. So, these are the uh, instruments which are used uh, and disposable which are used in IUI. You can see there is a Cusco speculum round bottom tubes 50 ml, 5 ml droppers, catheters, freezing vials and conical bottom tubes because the IUI is processed by uh, two three methods. So, direct swim up methods required uh, round bottom tubes and uh, the density gradient method requires the conical bottom tubes. So, you should be having both the tubes and a cement container jar. So, now we will talk about the media used for cement preparation. Basically, there are two methods for cement preparation. One is swim up and other one is density gradient. Swim up is used with uh, normal cement which have normal count, normal motility and less pustules and debris. On the other hand, density gradient is used for high DFI cement or uh, more debris or more uh, abnormal cements. Uh, these all media are commercially available and this media are uh, heapies media means it has a heapies buffer and not the bicarbonate buffer. So, you do not need to incubate it, uh, you do not need a CO2 incubator for it, you can just use it at a room temperature and you should bring all the medias at 37 or aliquot the required media and put it at 37 before using it because the, all the medias are generally refrigerated. So, bring it at 37 before use and do not put all the medias outside the refrigerator. Take the media required media and then put the uh, remaining media by sealing it with a parafilm or tape back to the refrigerator. And then if you want to freeze the semen, you uh, cement freezing media is also commercially available. It is available in two form like with egg yolk or without egg yolk. Both the media have same results, but if you are using media with egg yolk, you must wash after thawing it before insemination. So, now I will uh, mention briefly what is the composition of the semen preparation media. Basically, we use heapies media or a flush media and then for density gradient media and semen freezing media. The basic difference between these three media are the heapies or the semen wash media has heparin or optional phenol red which can indicate which what is the pH. It has all the salts, energy substrate like uh, glucose and it has uh, other macromolecules like uh, albumin and all. It has antibiotic and the base is always water. And density gradient media has a silicon coated silica granules uh, which can uh, like uh, give you the density gradients like uh, 45 percent, 90 percent like that. So, it has a granules. And Specifically, if you are using density gradient media, you make sure that after the processing of semen, you wash that semen properly because it has the traces of granules in it. And then semen freezing media. The main difference between these three media is the glycerol present in the semen freezing media. Otherwise, the basic energy substrate, glucose and the salts and the amino acids and the chelators and pH indicators everything is same in all ba basics are same in all the media. The main difference depends on the purpose of its use. Uh, now, we will talk about the logistics like how much cost uh, one IUI lab has. So, here you can see some of the instruments are not mandatory where I have written optional. This if you want to move on after 
sometimes after setting up an iui lab and if you require more high tech lab then only you can go to that things so firstly you should have laminar flow centrifuge macular chamber test tube warmer by binocular microscope and camera and led are uh, optional and ac and refrigerator and laptop this is the minimalistic thing which you should have for setting up an iui lab and which could cost approximately this is all approximate cost not the definite so it should cost somewhere around 3.5 to 4 lakhs and uh, you can go with minimal still minimal also but the requ uh, according to the new law this much things are mandatory for an iui lab and then of course documentation documentation is very important you should record each and everything uh, history of patient uh, abstinence the forms should be there for semen analysis also for semen freezing also for iui processing also and each and everything should be recorded and donor uh, free semen content should also be recorded consent consents also should be taken affidavit now according to the new law you should uh, have an affidavit signed by a lawyer if the patient requires a donor semen and all this data should be uh, submitted to the national registry whenever they they will be coming with a time period whenever they ask for like in a monthly basis or three month or half yearly basis and you should upload that media in a national registry and now it is mandatory for all the iui labs which is called level one labs and uh, most important you should be uh, putting an sops for how your lab should be working for how each and every instrument or the person in the lab should be working and that sops should be strictly followed by the staff and qaqc and amc should be timely done daily qaqc uh, weekly qaqc monthly qaqc uh, quarterly QAQC which is done by the other engineers which come from the whatever vendor you have purchased that instrument and then uh, this all record also should be maintained properly and submitted to the national registry. These are few laws which you can go to the new law uh, PDF and obviously study. So in conclusion, you need to have best infrastructure, best equipments with regular QAQC and best highly qualified and skilled staff. So this was the brief uh, how you can set up an IUI lab. But if you still need have any queries or you still need any information on this, you can contact me on the below given email ID or a number. I will be happy to help you. Thank you very much.